Crawford Dean's report for January 14th, 2010. We build relationships that work. Thanks for being connected. I'm Oscar Crawford. 16 years ago, my wife Bonnie and I designed and created a tool to change the way people think about, approach, and manage their personal and professional relationships. We called it Exploring. 16 years and thousands of people later, we're still doing everything in our power to help people get it right in their relationships. 16 days from now, we will present exploring ourselves and our relationships with other people for the first time in 2010. Exploring presents opportunity for self-examination to determine personal values, personal priorities, and personal approaches to relationships. Exploring is not for people whose relationships are perfect or for people whose relational enterprises all work at peak efficiency all the time. To the contrary, exploring is for people that are willing to admit they need help with their relationships. Exploring is for people that desire to enhance the quality of their personal and professional relationships. Exploring is for people that are willing to make beneficial adjustments where necessary and make their relationships better wherever possible. We developed exploring in the 1990s for a number of reasons. Among them, we determined the then new buzzword diversity was an inappropriate first step to human relations or relationships within organizations. For diversity to be an appropriate first step requires assuming that individuals already had developed personal skill sets within their own individual personalities and distinct groupings by culture, race, ethnic origin, religion, and gender to identify but a few. Nothing could be further from the truth or reality or the facts. In fact, to assume people are already okay with themselves, well, you know what to assume usually accomplishes. To make the assumption that people that are different by the groups identified are socially and emotionally developed enough to engage others that are different with positive regard resulting in a minimum of conflict without proper preparation is not a mature approach to human behavior. Moreover, the one reason above all that prompted our initiating and engaging the work of helping others develop effective and functional relationships with themselves and others is because relationships are what all people are involved in more than anything else. How is it that the activity most significant to all people should have so little investment? It is because people assume, there's that word again, it is because people assume they know what they are doing when it comes to relationships and do not require help assistance or direction. The record of human behavior and human history do not bear this assumption out. Is there an approach to resolving this social and emotional dilemma in dysfunction? Yes, there is. The approach lies in finding the courage to admit that many of us have made and continue to make relational messes and mistakes in our lives that we want to stop. When we are willing to admit and stop, we can take the time necessary to evaluate our approach and gather new information on how to get what we want. Then, we can take the new information to the relational equation and take new action. Consider this, many, too many, manage relationships as a result of the direct influence of adults in their lives from childhood. Too many accept family relationships are just what they are, either good or bad, or to be tolerated and accepted. There are no choices in families we arrive part of when we are born. Friendships and other relationships, on the other hand, are different. They are engaged and entered into by choice, but often managed the same way. When the ways observed, modeled, and patterned do not prove to be effective or work, many do the same relational things anyway, over and over, 
believing for, hoping for a different outcome. This approach is equivalent to insanity, inasmuch as proof is available that current systems of approach and ways of doing relationship do not work. What may have worked well within the framework of traditional male and female relationships, organizational relationships of leaders and followers, or relationships of business cannot be realistically expected to work inside the portal of the second decade of the 21st century. Note the following. Reason number one, that American business relocates to third world nations is not just cheap labor alone. It is the need to control a work environment where workers have little to no input in what they do or how they are managed while simultaneously increasing profits for the bottom line. The notion of the worker relationships of unions does not exist. This was management's way when the single boss was overlord to workers throughout early America up and through the 1970s. Since then, Americans by and large do not find this approach of organizational antiquity acceptable. These know there is a better way to organize people around the management of a corporate mission than force and intimidation. This diseased dysfunction of debilitating relationships as a result of emotional insanity has spread far enough and certainly lasted more than long enough. It can stop when decisions are reached to examine and re-examine our notions of the purpose for a relationship in the first place. Next, individuals and organizations desiring relationship and the benefits of relationship must bring a willing spirit and something to offer and share to the table that is necessary, beneficial, or desirable to and by others relationship is desired with and with whom relationship might be mutually experienced and enjoyed. Do you know men and women who consistently and continuously run into the same relationship problems over and over again without discovering they alone are the only common denominator? Of course you do. You feel sorry for them, sympathize with them, and wonder why they don't get it. When would now be a good time to challenge yourself and others to raise relational skill levels to increase the probability of success in relationships and getting what you want. This can be achieved. You can do this. You can have the kind of intimate relationship you want. You can enjoy and experience the kind of organizational relationships you want. The how-to process and plan is yours in four days. Or you can choose to continue to be ignorant of what works well in relationships. You are free to do that. You can choose to continue to stay stuck in your rut, thinking you will finally get it right, doing things the same way that has never brought you success to date. You can do that. The time will come and must come when you realize that your way has not and does not work. Your cheese has moved, your wife has left, you're broken alone, but you have your pride. Wake up. You do not enjoy the respect of others because you do not enjoy your own respect. You can choose to just be stupid, miserable, and unhappy for the rest of your life. You can do that. Or you can make another choice. Here's hoping you are ready to make a better choice. There is a better way. The how-to process and plan is yours in four days. This is the Crawford Dean's Report. We build relationships that work.